Rob, good morning to you. By the time Brent Woodall left his home in New Jersey 20 years ago on a morning very similar to this one, he'd already had several lifetimes of success. A player on a top 10 ranked college football team, a pitcher who helped carry his team to the College World Series, and building a burgeoning career in finance in New York City. Like too many others, he would never return home from that morning 20 years ago. But his story continues to spread in memory and more powerfully in legacy. Two decades later, we are their witnesses. We share their stories. We say their names. And for every name, a life and a legacy. Legacy. It means to know somebody beyond the day they died. To know who they really were when they were alive. Not all athletes can be captured in a single picture, but for Brent Woodall, one comes close. Oh my God, that's the picture. <laughs> I mean, that's impressive. It just culminates everything about him. He's so competitive, so determined, just going above and beyond. That's just the way he was. He hated to lose, and so he would dig down deep and do whatever was necessary. Good job by Brent Woodhall. That's the kind of stuff he did all the time. End zone, touchdown, Brent Woodall, the tight end. Woodall was a two-sport star for Cal in the early 90s, a pass-catching tight end, and a closer for the baseball team, good enough to be drafted by the Cubs. We all just assumed he would be successful. He had been everywhere he'd gone, and so for him to play and start in as many games as he did wasn't a surprise, really, to any of us, because we knew that he would do that. After injuries ended his baseball career, by 1995, Woodall began a new path on Wall Street as an equities trader. Married just a year, he was in his office on the 86th floor of the World Trade Center's South Tower on September 11th, 2001. I was driving to work and Brent calls me and says, there's been an accident at the other building. So I turn and I can see the World Trade Center at this point. A very tragic alert, an incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. And I can see the smoke. I just started like crying and I'm screaming at him, you have to leave. And so he says, okay, okay, I'm gonna leave. The debris raining out the far side of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. This is really, truly one of the most horrible things that I have ever seen. I just didn't have a future anymore because it went down with the tower. Everything just went black. And all I wanted to do was go back in time. I could do. All of my dreams, all of my plans were enmeshed with Brent. And when he was gone, I had nothing. Brent Woodall was 31 years old. A life cut short, but a legacy just beginning, first taking shape through a suggestion he made to Tracy. I remembered him saying, you need to have a nonprofit. That's who you are. And I said, hey, I'm gonna start a nonprofit and I'm going to name it in honor of Brent because it was his idea. <laughs> Founded in 2003, today, 
The Brent Woodall Foundation for Exceptional Children serves a community of families of children with autism and developmental disabilities. We see several hundred children a year in addition to our international outreach as well. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to have the challenge of working with these families and their children. A second legacy plays in Berkeley. The Brent Woodall Memorial Scholarship has gone to one Cal Bear for the last 20 seasons. This season, it's another pass-catching tight end. This time, Gavin Reinwald gets involved. I think he sets the bar high and knowing that I'm able to carry on part of his legacy, especially for like Cal football. I really took pride in that. The foundation, the field, but the greatest and most precious legacy is her. Here's Woodall, 19, a volleyball player at Columbia in New York City. The daughter, Brent Woodall, never met, born seven months after he died. She walks like him. <laughs> she's brilliant, she's athletic, she's funny, caring, she's strong. It's amazing that someone that uh, he never met can have a similar personality to him. She can turn up the intensity when necessary, and that's exactly how he was. How do you think your dad is alive in you? Just kind of carrying on that legacy that, you know, I, I think of so metaphysically. <laughs> Keeping that kind of close to me forever and always acknowledging that it happened and always knowing that he was part of my life, even if he wasn't. So, yeah. <laughs> 20 years later, we share the stories. We say the names. And for all, we count the legacies. I'm a very firm believer in you never truly die until somebody forgets your name and always have your name in somebody's mouth somewhere. So many gifts. I would have never started the foundation without his support. People play a sport they love because of him. Pierce. She's perfect. He did that. It's really special. always wanted children, and on his first wedding anniversary, Tracy tried to let him know the good news to come by giving him a book about what new fathers should expect. He didn't understand until she told him the surprise directly. Eight and a half miles from here, Pierce Woodall just led her Columbia volleyball team to its first win of this new season. She doesn't spend this day at ground zero. Instead, she says she carries her father, Brent, with her every day in all she does and in who she is.